Gable, it's great to finally have you uh, in South Africa, to have you in the East Cape. It's been planning, it's been talking, it's been visiting about it down at Dallas Safari Club. It feels like two years we've been at this and finally to have you here. It's fantastic. It's the opening morning of our hunt. We're looking for Impala, we're looking for Elan, we're looking for Kudu, Bushbuck. It's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> we're looking for anything. We, we, we're going out there. We, we don't have a, we don't necessarily have a, a, a target species today. There's a lot out here and um, we, we hope we can find something. Yeah. Uh, being down to the range, things are looking good and now it's time to get hunting. It's yeah. time for the fun. I'm excited. I'm pumped. It's beautiful. Follow this ridge of Aloe's town. Get really low and just scoot over the edge and see what distance we had there. But these Impala, they've, they've snuck away, gave us a skip earlier. And I think we, we could get a chance where they are now. They seem to be quite relaxed, feeling happy. So he's gone in behind the aloe vera. He comes out to the right. I'm going to make him stop shortly, eh? Yeah! Okay, you've hit him a bit back. Let's just watch him. Okay. He's facing us, standing in the brush. Have a shot at him in the chest. He's looking to the left, straight on. Good shot. You hit him again? Yeah, you hit him. Good shot, buddy. Well, Cable, our first morning, um, been to the range. We got ourselves, got the gun sorted out, and uh, came out looking for Impala. Often a a beginner for a lot of guys coming to Africa. They're prolific in numbers and we, we found a really good, good male this morning. Good ram, he was in the bachelor group. And uh, we, we got stalked down onto them once. We, uh, we didn't get busted, but we lost them all together. We, we found some harder beasts, we found Steenbuck, we found Elan, we found Waterbuck. And, but we lost them, there were 30 of them and they were just gone. Warthog, we've seen lots We of saw them. warthogs, you're right. And uh, we, we, we had just about given up spotted a group of zebra and uh, then headed, uh, saw these guys and said, well, let's give it another go. And that time worked, beautiful shot, 300 yards, just, yeah. just shy of 300 yards, fantastic. Uh, you made a great first shot. Uh, probably he, he just walked as you, as you shot, mm -hmm. uh, but the follow-up shot was fantastic and we dropped him right there. He just went and tumbled up um, immediately after that. So a great start, um, a beautiful Impala yeah. Ram really like him. Uh, I love the ridges. I like the hard bases. There's a bit of that Perspex color actually coming through. So all in all, my man, it's good mass on him. He's got the width, which you guys really like in North America, obviously. But yeah, congratulations. Thanks, brother. Great start. Okay, let's wait for it to stop. It will stop. Okay, on the shoulder. Good shot. Good shot. Exactly. Good looking blood right here. It's good colour, good sign, my man. And taking off that direction. Um, happened a bit quick, my man. We, we spotted them across the valley, came up the draw, and I thought they were working their way into the wind. And uh, man, there he was. Big old zebra standing looking at us, and you, you made a quick shot there from the standing sticks. It was a good shot. It sounded like a very good thud. So we're going to follow up, keep following this blood, and we, we should find our zebra. Got blood all along here. Blood. Stoned it. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, oh, my awesome, man. man. Very, very nice. He's stone dead. <laughs> Pop came right in here, piled him up, and Bongo showed us exactly where he was. So he went actually, I mean, not even 80 yards, it feels like. Eh? I mean, yeah. we were, we've literally come around from the uh, from, from the, the cactus back there. We've tracked around here, so really, I think just where we were, where we had shot from, he had disappeared quite fast and a little bit nervous of that, but fantastic, my man. Well, the we blood doesn't do. lie. That doesn't <laughs> lie in the blood, the color of the blood, eh? Yeah. Very well done. Said, which was interesting, he said zebras, uh, they don't bleed very much. No, that was a very good sign. And when I found blood and I told all the way to him on the radio, I said, 
I've got blood, yes, right, perfect, no problem. He likes that, because often the track is really battle with zebra and we actually cannot track uh, the zebra because they don't bleed that much and we, then we're only following tracks. So while they're running, we're good. And we can follow them for the first four, five hundred yards, but then they stop running. That's when you get stuff in the rocks. Yeah, so very happy with that. Been a great morning. <laughs>exactly what we're after. Um, we've got a group of 11 or 12 bulls here that come out the forest like I was hoping they would this afternoon but by the time we spotted them I just think as much as it kills me knowing there's a bull over there I'd like to go for right now. Yeah. Um, I think my experience tells me it's time out for the day. Let's rather let it be. Yeah. Um, We're running out of daylight. Running out of daylight here yeah, I think it's just a responsible thing for us. Let him be, leave them in these valleys here. Um, tomorrow we head up, we're going to Kudu up in the mountains. But for day one, I think we had an awesome day. Oh, yeah. We got an awesome impala. We got lucky on a zebra. And I think it's been an amazing start. I think there's a lot for you to look forward to. And where we're going tomorrow is what I call heaven. Really magnificent up in the mountains. Well, if it's better than this, I mean, I don't see how it could be. This is amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot different than what I expected. Oh, that's neat. In a good way. Yeah, fantastic. And, and you had mentioned to me earlier today, you, 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 have a, you had a vision of, of Africa, what may be Hollywood or the shows and things have, have put for you. This is the diversity of this is so much different to what you're going to see tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be savannah. It's going to be big mountains, um, rolling hills as well, and a lot of good. That's what we're hoping for. Good. is done. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, my man. That is the most excited I've seen you, eh? <laughs> done. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking. Yeah, you were yeah. shaking leading up to that, you know? Oh, I had to, I had to calm my breath down. <sighs> that was epic. That was epic, eh? You were shaking leading up to that. I was watching you, I was thinking, man, you're excited. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but well done, my man. Oh, man. That is so awesome. That was an incredible hunt. That was fun, eh? That yeah. was fun. Coming into the mountains this morning and then finding bulls, finding some cars, not finding what we're after. Lawrence, yeah, he was getting all nervous saying, you know, he'd been spotting these bulls and now we can't find them. And oh, oh, within an hour, we, we finally located them. With this wind, it affected the, the habit a little bit. And mm -hmm. find him in a nice draw. We had to wait patiently for him to show himself. And finally, he did show himself. And then, we, then it was a patience game, getting a shoulder. But fantastic. Well, don't forget the about 150 yard crawl down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we have enough stickers in our backsides oh, yeah, to last yeah. a year, my man. But yeah. Well worth it. Well worth it and a beautiful, well played shot, my man. And I, I want to say, just for anybody that hasn't hunted Africa, that I didn't expect this. This reminds me of Western big game hunting. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Just a lot of time on the glass. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very planned out, methodical. Dark, so. Oh no, it's very nice. I think I think one of the one of the things that people don't realise how often we use spotting scopes in Africa. Yeah. I literally live with my spotting scope. Every one of our fresh lanterns, they all live in these spotting scopes all day. Because of the, the size and the magnitude of the land we're hunting, 
you see so much, but I mean, you'd spend days just going to have a look at what, you, what you're seeing. So. Epic. Epic, <laughs> epic. Massive congratulations, my man. Thanks. Awesome, awesome kudu. Bongo, you found him, boy? You found him, Bongs? Boy. Yeah, he's magnificent, this wood. Look at these white tips on this animal. Okay, well, he is beautiful. Still got that neck from the rat. I mean, the ivory on this guy is awesome. It's such a beautiful kudu. I mean, he is just beautiful, eh? Yeah. Really, really cool. I mean, look at the ivory on this guy. All the way, thick, heavy tips. I mean, he's got good hooks on him. Just magnificent, my man. Dude, really, really I awesome. How big these are. Yeah, no, that's, it's going to be a going to be a job getting him out of here. I can <laughs> tell you that much. And a really beautiful chevron here on him too. Yeah, he's, he's just hooked up with this tree. Yeah, but beautiful chevron, magnificent animal. I'd say this is one of the most fun hunts that I've ever had. So hunting kudu in the mountains on the East Cape it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure, my man. Well <laughs> done. Okay, well, as you can see, while stalking him and coming down the hill, we saw him thrashing with his horns. And this is what these bulls do in the rut. You actually see this thorn tree, which is quite, quite a decent size. He's gone up with his horns and twisted it off. And they actually, what, what they will do by doing that is obviously prove their dominance right. to any other kudu bulls around. But it will often actually provide some feed for some of the young animals that can't reach up where the, where the better growth is. Oh. Um, so a bit of a double fold in... In, in the reason they do that, but mostly this time of year is to show who's the boss. What she was definitely doing, we got to see that. Definitely, I mean he smashed yeah. this tree, we got <laughs> one, two, three, four, four branches just broken on this one and when you look around here, you're going to find, and you'll find other older branches actually broken where this has been his territory up and down. Uh -huh. We're coming to the end of the rut now, so there's a lot of branches broken all over the show, but lucky to still find one in the rut. Yeah. Pretty cool. It was awesome to see. Seems like they're still fast asleep, resting up in the morning sun. It's a cool morning here in Africa. And uh, if we just wake him out, he'll start feeding and we should get a shot we're after. Awesome. Okay, let's see if we can get him, guys.
Reload, reload is wicked. Yeah. Oh, really. Did he stumble? Check the he's not. He's, he's not well this big. On that root right there, there's a. Um, you can see the blood where the pig has gone in here. So the pig's been hit a little bit high. And uh, like pigs sometimes do, they go into these burrows. And now we're going to start digging and uh, hopefully get to our pig. But it's going to be interesting. We're in for a long day now. Well, we are now on to our second hole, yeah? First hole we've got to where Bongo is. We've seen the hole turned again, the burrow. And we can actually see Bongo fighting the pig every now and then. He lunges at him. And uh, we feel where this hole's going through, we're going to get him. So, wish us luck. Okay, yep, yep. Right of the hoof. Okay. Okay. One, two, yeah. three. Okay. Reload. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, chaps, this is a pig. Yeah, bet. Well, Cable, uh, we wanted an adventure on the safari. I think this warthog proved to be our massive adventure. Um, we saw him at about 9 45, 10 o'clock. It took us about a half an hour to stalk down and uh, we got in position. And, and I'd say to you that, that once he gets up, he might <coughs> not stick around too long. Mm -hmm. And um, I think w with that, I probably should have told you, well, you didn't have to take him in seconds, but you did. <laughs> you hit him a little bit high and, he, and we tracked him up the valley. Uh, Bongo disappeared on us and we couldn't find him, couldn't find him and, and finally or where you thought he heard Bongo on the back side of the ridge from the valley we in here and um, he, he first went and checked on that side, came back and he finally realized Bongo was actually in the burrow with a warthog and he tracked, he, he picked up the tracks again, heard the sound and followed it, followed it and he got to the, the, the actually to the base of the hole and he could see the blood where the pig had gone in. Mm -hmm. So at least we knew where the pig was <coughs> but then the real work started as you saw. I think it. We, we had a five-hour dig for him, um, but we, we, what, what we, what we started, we finished. We have recovered our pig, which is the most important thing, and we got ourselves a fantastic water bottle. This is a beautiful, beautiful one. That, uh, I won't soon forget. And yeah. A lot of teamwork involved. Yeah. This one, you know, it's unfortunate. I hit him about probably two or three inches high. Did a little damage. I don't know. He might not have survived, but. Uh, we definitely wouldn't have found him without the dog. So. Yeah, so Bongo, Bongo did a hell of a job today. Yes, he did. Hell of a job, and uh, nice to see them in action and, and know why they're on safari with you. I think some guys go through a safari and never know what the little dog can actually do, but it does add to the experience, oh, and yeah. it is fantastic uh, to fall back on when, when our senses cannot get us there anymore. But really nice to have this warthog. It's a boss hog in our world, yeah. When you got excited, you know, I, I got excited. I mean, uh, when you say this is a pig that we need to kill because need to. oh my gosh yeah. it's just a stud what it you know that makes this someone who's never seen one i don't know what i'm looking yeah. at a good one or an average one or yeah. what so uh, i couldn't be happier so thank you very much it's actually a pleasure and well done my man thanks yeah. for sticking with us <laughs> uh what a teamwork got it we got ourselves a great one yeah. we'll wait for him to come all the way out Wait, wait, we don't have a shot, wait. You can come all the way clear, take your time, just wait. He'll come in the clear, just wait. I see you, see him. Okay. Okay. Wait for him to stop, eh? Take him down. 
Well, it's been an amazing day, Cable. We've we found a huge warthog early this morning. We spent most of the day hunting him, <laughs> tracking him down, digging him up. Yeah. And just before sundown, we said, let's go for a drive. Lawrence said he knows about a nice mountain reed buck. And I said to him, Lowe, it's got to be something very nice, you know. And uh, lo and behold, as our luck would have it, the last two days have been amazing. We come around the corner and right there is a huge mountain reed buck. There wasn't much time to do much than jump out of the truck, do a little run up the road and uh, made our way through the thorns and, and, and you got set up, my man. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I don't know much about this species. Just, uh, I know he lives in the mountains. We've been watching him for two days now. Um, but you guys, I mean, tell me why this is so special for South Africans. For us as kids growing up in this area, this is one of the first trophies that you will hunt. This is one of the first uh, meat animals. Uh, what, what we would take home for the meat locker as, as uh, kids, we would be allowed to harvest one of these. So it holds a special place for a lot of us growing up hunting in this area. Um, they're prolific here, as you've seen over the last couple of days. We've probably seen three, four hundred. Yeah. Uh, so we, we spoiled for choice here in these mountains. And this particular male here, um, when I saw him, I, I didn't want to tell you, but man, he was just mind blowing. He wasn't far. He was 200 yards. I, I put the spotting scope on him because he was in some trees. Mm -hmm. And the minute the spotting scope went on, everybody jumped to action because I said, wow, this is amazing. And Lawrence then, jumped down, looked the spotting scope and his eyes got that big. But what really makes this amazing is that in 15 years of guiding, um, I've dreamt about a Mount Reedbuck in this class. In my life did I never ever think I would harvest a Mount Reedbuck well, well beyond eight inches. Uh, this year is, this is the stuff of dreams. This is a 200 plus free range whitetail deer in our language. Um, he has been, he's an old warrior, lived in these mountains, his genes are spread here. And to have a male of this class where the pulp is hard, the secondary growth is coming out, what we call the stem, he's got points, but what makes this guy, he's got hooks. So from the side, you can actually see the hooks, and that's really what, what one is after. You can hunt, you can look for, you will go a long way. Um, I've maybe done 80 to 100 of these in my career guiding in 15 years and I never ever got close to this. <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime. I always said that one day when I find one, I'd like to hunt, hunt one myself well. I'm so glad you could do it, my man. I'm oh, so okay. glad that you could come to Africa, uh, support our initiative here, hunting for conservation and doing what you do and, and thank you for what you do at the Lone Star Outdoor Show for us, eh? I appreciate it. And, and for all hunters, it's, it's just amazing. and. It I mean, puts value for these animals. To tell the folks back home, it's uh, it's beyond my wildest dreams of what what this place is and has to offer. And uh, and, and for me, not really knowing what I had shot here. Yeah. Uh, when we walked up on it, and you and Lawrence were like, "Man, I'm, I'm a little emotional right now." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's when it got to me. I was like, "Wow, this is a pretty special animal." Love yeah. this. Uh, Thick coat. Yeah, very, very similar to your North American game. Mm -hmm. Not, not the hollow hair like you guys have, but he, because it gets cold in these mountains, they've got a good mat, nice covering for winter. And the Dutch settlers and, and my, my, my people that I come from, the Afrikaners, they were the first people to, to, to come into this land. And at that time, it, it's actually called a Rerebok, which means a red, a red buck that lives on the ridge. And it's because the males have this red uh, color on their necks as they age. Yeah. Yeah, and so, Lawrence said, uh, he looked at his teeth and said, I said, how old is this animal? He said, he, uh, he probably would have been kicked out at the end of this season. I would think so. so. They are down, absolutely so. flat, full mouth flat that's on the ground. That's what we gum. came here to do is take mature animals. Yeah. You know, that's what conservation is all about. So it's time to head in. Time for a nice campfire. Time for a couple of cold beards. It has been a fun day. It has been an adventurous day. And it has lived up to every bit of what I'd hope you'd experience. It's been Beyond a great, great day. Tomorrow is another day, and tomorrow is Bushbuck Day. Yeah. So one of my favorite, one of Lawrence's favorite, and we'll be back up early in the morning, back into the mountains looking for Bushbuck. I can't wait. Epic. Well, we're hunting Bushbuck this morning, and uh, it's a bit breezy. So we're gonna make ourselves a fire to stay nice and warm, number one. 
and number two, we are going to have a traditional South African barbecue lunch in the field. So we've built ourselves a nice rock pillar for protection so this fire doesn't run away. And uh, we're going to light up and then we're going to cook over the open coals here. We're going to cook some nice game sausage, some kudu sausage for lunch. While we glass for bushbuck. Up early again this morning, we are on the hunt for Elan and the guys last night hunting Cape Buffalo actually spotted a group of Elan bulls and this morning we've come up to the ridges above where they spotted them and right at first light we've actually spotted a nice group of Elan bulls. Um, we've got another family group high up in the valley and these three bulls are kind of hanging about the water. So we're going to make our way down the valley again okay? quietly but we have to watch out there'll be a lot of kudu bushbuck. It'll be nyala as we go down here. So we just gotta keep watching it as we as we go, just go carefully and hopefully get onto them. No, not the kind of animal you wanna uh, be chasing all day. Make sure of our shot and make sure we get right in close. What a shot, what a shot, no need, no need, what a shot, what a shot, what a shot, just watch him for me, what a shot, do you see him, do you see him, I want to take again, he's the one broadside in the brush up here, you see him, he's like, I just want to make sure we're on the right animal. He's more to the left, the broadside one over the top of this tree. You just see the top of his back. Oh, there he's fallen down. Well, Cable, a successful morning, my man. We got ourselves a magnificent Cape Eden bull. Um, we, we've looked over a number. We passed on our first evening, actually. We decided to let them walk. The area they were in, it would, it would have made it tough to get onto them. And this morning, uh, we took some good advice from Glenn and the guys hunting buffalo and we found them at first light and we had enough time. We could work it nicely. We came down the ridge and uh, they started feeding up the other, sort of the, up, the, up, up the embankment from the bottom of the valley. I think might have heard us, might have smelt us, but it worked out really good. The fact that they could come out and clear for us and then you had to make a really tight shot. They were kind of filing up the ridge and great reactions by you, really a fantastic shot. And uh, Derek's guns just did the job, just fantastic. Uh, driver. The Ryzen Firearms really doing a hell of a job. And this big old Elon bull dropped to a very well placed shot just behind the shoulder. I had asked you to make sure we shoot for the opposite shoulder to anchor. We wanted to break a shoulder and you did exactly that. Mm -hmm. This back shoulder is completely broken. You anchored him, he maybe went 20 yards and he piled up. So really, really fantastic. Um, he has all the attributes I'd want out of a Cape Elan. Uh, you're quite lucky, he still has some horn on him. He's a 10 year plus bull. He's got a nice mop, he's got that blue dewlap and a nice heavy sick neck and a big body. Uh, so all in all, my man. Uh, couldn't be happier. Just so I can't believe how big this animal is. It's That's a so massive, massive wow. animal. Really nice. Yeah, the the uh, biggest antelope in the world. Yeah, you're right. Really nice. Incredible, incredible day. We're on that for uh, wildebeest this afternoon, either black or blue. And seen, seen a lot of black wildebeest, unfortunately we got busted. 
Paul came in and busted everybody up and caused a bunch of chaos. We've just spotted a nice blue wallabies. We can make our way down this little draw here. Use a little bit of this blind ground, hopefully get close to him. But he's in the brush right now. We saw him from high up. Maybe we can get on to him. Let's give it a go. The one standing broadside. There we go. That better. <laughs> that was better. That was better. This is the first time we've come up here to the plains at the Woodlands. Absolutely beautiful. Got to see a wide array of species. Uh, blessed buck, uh, spring buck, a heart of beast, red heart of beast. But what I really had my heart set on was a blue wildebeest. Just look at this uh, hide here. It's just stunning. Absolutely gorgeous animal. And uh, we glassed him up executed a stalk and put them down with the Horizon Firearm 7 mag. So a great day here on the plains with John X Safari's South Africa's Eastern Cape. I couldn't be happier. Uh, nice mature old male here. What an animal, what a hunt. See one looking over his shoulder back at you. There's that whole thing away from him. Now he looks away. Just watch that animal for me. Your, your bulk is up. He turns that animal. He turns now. And he looks at your broadside head on the right. Okay, you can take it just behind the shoulder. That's it, boy. That's it. Yeah. Isn't he beautiful? Look at these bosses. Beautiful. Cracked up bosses we have here. And uh, I, I told you, these guys are a bit smaller once you come out, get up to them. They're a lot smaller than the blue wildebeest we took yesterday. Uh, but what I really like about these guys is the character on them. I love the, this mane, the colour of the mane. I like the, the sweep in the horns you have here. If you look at this, you'll see he's got the, we call it the tennis ball, the knobs here. That's what a good wildebeest must have. Uh -huh. The drop, we always say, in line with the eyes. This guy's a little bit below the eyes, which is nice. And then the tips come up in line with the top of the bosses here. Yeah. The, he's a great old bull. He's cracked up really nicely. Nice character, the white lashes you got here. And your shot on the other side, when we turn him over, is just perfect, man. I, I, he was in the herd situation. There was a minute, half a split second that he cleared. And uh, I, I know the round you used, and I, and I really doubt it would go through. So uh, we, 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 we did well. There's no exit on this animal. So dropped we have him in his tracks. dropped him in his tracks. Beautiful, beautiful wildebeest. And uh, yeah, another one to add to a fantastic safari. Thanks, buddy. Congratulations. What a day on the plains. Yeah, getting windier, yeah. but uh, we, we, we stuck it out and we got it. Awesome, awesome hunt. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Well over. Then it might take again. This is my thing. So he's walking in the group. He's got towards the left. You see those ones that are higher up here at the back? Mm -hmm. So he's the one standing lowest. Oh no, he's dead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I felt good. Oh, he is dead. I'm watching him die. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> there he is, my man. Right. That was a pretty good line we walked on right there. Yeah. Yes, Gable. What a shot to start with. Look at that. 
I believe that was a 375 from the Horizon Firearm 7 mag. That's the farthest shot I've had this week. So. That is absolutely fantastic. Not, not, not the kind of shot we were hoping for, but we could make it. No, and it was cool because I misplaced the uh, sandbag. Oh. It's like breaking the golden rule. Right? Yeah. Well. My binos. My man, we have a awesome Hardebeest. Really, really nice Hardebeest. Very seldom will you have a Hardebeest, what we call, what we say, it's like grown closed here at the bases. So you need a screwdriver to get that last little bit of hair out. And then the most awesome hooks on this guy. Just fantastic Hardebeest all around, my man. What beautiful. Very, very nice. You told me in the beginning of the week, you really want a Hardebeest. And I, I thought to myself, that's quite strange for a first time. <laughs> a lot of guys don't go for that in their first trip. But I'm glad you did. I think he's very, very handsome. Yeah. Handsome yeah, and, 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 and a lot of guys don't go for them the first time. Some guys really like them and some, some guys don't. But I like the colour. Oh, yeah. When they shine in the sun, I don't know if you noticed before we took the shot while we were waiting for him to turn. I don't know if you noticed how beautiful that colour comes up in the sun in the late afternoon. So, yes, my man. Just a great end to our day. Um, just an awesome, awesome book. And a nice... Nice hunt to finally get out of the wind. When, oh. when the Hardebees decided to leave the plains and head over towards the brush, it was nice to get out of the wind for a, for a break today. We, uh, we chased them hard. <laughs> we, we did. We, we spent all afternoon. We did. We, well, we, we set our sights on this guy yeah, and, yeah. and we, we, we really kept that. It's a fantastic shot. Yeah. It was that good that at first I saw dust just behind it. I saw dust fly and I was like, Cable, I think you missed it. And the next thing he took two steps forward and tumbled over <laughs> and said, well, I'm so terribly sorry, my man. Well, well done, buddy. Very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice pool. Yeah.